Hi, welcome back to Securing Digital Democracy. I'm J. Alex Holderman. Um, today in the second lecture, we're going to get to take a look at um, some of the history of voting systems going back to the uh, beginning of modern democracy and coming almost all the way to the present day. Uh, we're going to get to watch as um, voting system after voting system gets introduced, um, has security problems exploited by the bad guys, and is replaced by something else that's promised to be the next great thing in keeping elections secure. Um, this is going to give us a chance to practice applying the security mindset we learned about in the last lecture to try to spot the problems with each of these systems. And it's going to tell us a lot about um, why voting systems work the way they do today. Um, I apologize a little bit because our focus is going to be primarily on the United States, and I know we have a very international audience, um, but it turns out that the U.S. is an excellent petri dish for looking at the evolution of election technologies. That's because unlike in most other countries, elections in the U.S. are uh, regulated primarily by state law, and often the decisions about how the specifics are going to work vary from city to city, town to town, county to county. Um, all of this makes the system incredibly complicated and messy, but also just deeply fascinating to look at. Um, don't worry, I promise that in later lectures we're going to turn more of our attention to voting around the world. Um, also, I want to remind you all to keep up with the reading in our textbook, Broken Ballots. Um, we'll post the specific readings on the website for you. All right, let's get started. Um, perhaps the earliest kind of voting system used in uh, modern democracy um, is a, a very primitive sounding one. Uh, this is called voting by voice, or uh, viva voce in Latin, meaning the living voice. The idea here was simply that voters would announce out loud who they wanted to vote for, and other people would write that down and, and add it up. Um, it seems like a really simple idea, uh, but it turned out, as you might expect, to have some pretty serious security problems. Um, we can get a sense for this voting method um, by looking at this painting. This, this captures it uh, pretty well in all its glory and all its shame. Uh, this is called The County Election, and it's a painting by George Caleb Bingham. Uh, it depicts an election in the state of Missouri in 1846. Um, let's look at some of the details here, but try to imagine yourself in the place of the voter for a minute. So here we see the voter in the red shirt, and uh, he's walking up to the polling place. He stood in line. Now he's about to cast his vote. Um, First, we can see the authentication mechanisms in use. So here's the election judge, and he's going to swear in the voter. The voter is going to announce his name and then promise on the Bible uh, that he hasn't uh, already voted and that he's authorized to vote in that place. Um, there are several pieces to the authentication mechanism here. One, since he's calling out his name loudly, all of his neighbors and friends around there uh, are going to get to tell whether that's really, uh, uh, whether the voter is really who he says he is. If he announces the wrong name, uh, if he uh, is a stranger, all these people are going to be very suspicious. Uh, you might argue that the divine uh, authority of the Bible is another kind of security mechanism here, as is the state authority of the judge. So now the voter is going to call out the candidates he wants to vote for. And um, those are going to be announced loudly enough for everyone standing around to hear, um, especially for the clerks sitting in the background to hear. And they're going to write down on a sheet of paper the voter's name and his choice. Um, there are multiple clerks, a kind of redundant record keeping. This is another security mechanism. But even better, the system allows anyone standing around, any private citizen, to also make an independent record of the vote. Um, so uh, that's another way to check that the votes are being counted accurately. Now that you've seen how the system works, it's time to apply the security mindset and ask, what could go wrong? Think about how someone could try to manipulate this system or could try to cheat, and uh, we'll talk about some possible ways when we come back. So welcome back. Um, it turns out that there's a lot that can go wrong with voice voting, as you might assume from some, such a, uh, in some ways, primitive system. Um, 
let's talk about a few of the things that are wrong. Um, one thing that seems pretty wrong from modern sensibilities, I anyway, is who the voters are. Uh, at, at the beginning of the uh, democracy, um, only white male landowners were allowed to participate in voting most places. And that's who you see lined up in, in the painting. Uh, it wasn't until the 1920s that women gained universal suffrage in the U.S. and uh, African Americans were largely disenfranchised well into the 20th century. Um, but that's mostly a policy question rather than a security one. So we'll turn instead um, to looking at some of the ways that um, uh, voice voting failed to enforce major security properties. Um, the most obvious problem with voice voting is that there is no ballot secrecy whatsoever. You're calling out how you want to vote and everybody you know could be there listening to it. Um, let's see, uh, let's zoom into the picture a little bit and, uh, and see some of the ways that this uh, manifested itself. Um, one uh, thing you can see looking closely at the picture is uh, directly behind the voter in the, the blue coat there. Um, that's one of the political candidates, and he's talking to the next voter in line and handing him his, his calling card with his name on it. Um, can you imagine going to the poll and, uh, and voting with one of the candidates, maybe the one you don't like, standing there right over your shoulder? Um, it would create an incredible uh, uh, amount of awkwardness and pressure. Then if we look farther back in line, we see this guy who uh, appears to be uh, inebriated to the point of passing out and is being literally carried to the polling place, uh, perhaps by a political operative. Um, uh, if we look uh, over to the right of the painting, we can see this fellow who, um, unfortunately, it looks like he's just been roughed up. Um, perhaps he voted for uh, the wrong candidate. Um, so this kind of voter intimidation, both uh, softer and harsher forms of it, was a, a massive, massive problem with vo voice voting because there was just no privacy whatsoever. Um, voters could easily be intimidated um, by their friends, neighbors, candidates into um, voting a way that wasn't their true choice. Furthermore, a second problem with voice voting um, was, uh, was vote buying. So here on the left of the painting, um, we see uh, this happy looking fellow who's receiving a drink and seems to have just finished a meal. Um, this kind of uh, paying off of voters would be tremendously easy with this system because you could just make sure they voted the right way and then offer them um, the, the, the freebies as a reward. And there was no, uh, no way to prevent this um, uh, at the beginning uh, of modern democracy. This was just the status quo. So all of these problems, vote buying, voter coercion, um, uh, seriously undermined the security of uh, the election um, while we were practicing voice voting. And that drove technological change and the introduction of um, the first uh, kind of technology in the voting, uh, in the polling place. Uh, and that was the introduction of the ballot, which will be the subject of our next segment.